the seven tools of quality. We all know that management by facts calls for decisions based on relevant data and appropriate analysis and not by institution but feeling and experience. In this lesson, we will discuss various tools of quality assurance, the pros and cons of using different quality assurance tools and the advanced tools of quality assurance. After going through this presentation, you should be able to explain check sheet, discuss histograms, discuss scatter diagrams, understand flow charts and process mapping, describe cause and effect diagram, define Pareto diagrams, explain control charts, learn advanced tools of quality. Check sheets are the tools for collecting and organizing measured or counted data. Data collected can be used as input data for other quality tools. Collect data in a systematic and organized manner to determine source of problem and to facilitate classification of data or stratification are the benefits of check sheets. In the top chart, we see two operators and two machines. In the morning, both operators and both machines seem to be working well. However, in the afternoon, we see both operators are more prone to defects and the machine too is very prone to problems. We conclude there may be some operator fatigue involved and there is some problem on machine 2 that needs to be investigated. Look for something that affects on the machine but not the other like sun glare, conditions, workers and materials etc. Purpose of histograms is to determine the spread of variation of a set of data points in a graphical form. Question is, how is it done? First collect data, 50 to 100 data points. Then determine range of data. Calculate the size of class interval. Divide data points into classes. Determine the class boundary. Count number of data points in each class. Then draw the histogram. A histogram is a picture of the statistical variation in your process. Not only can histograms help you know which processes need improvement, they can also help you to track that improvement. This is a process that has too much variation to meet specifications no matter how it is centered. Action must be taken to reduce variation in this process. Scatter diagram identify the correlations that might exist between a quality characteristic and a factor that might be driving it. A scatter diagram shows the correlation between two variables in a process. These variables could be a critical to quality CTQ characteristic and a factor affecting it, two factors affecting a CTQ or two related quality characteristics. Dots representing data points are scattered on the diagram. The extent to which the dots cluster together in a line across the diagram shows the strength with which the two factors are related. Now the question is, how is it done? First decide which paired factors you want to examine. Both factors must be measurable on some incremental linear scale. Collect 30 to 100 paired data points. Find the highest and lowest value for both variables and draw the vertical y and horizontal x axis of a graph. Then plot the data and title the diagram. The shape that the cluster of dots take will tell you something about the relationship between the two variables that you have tested. If the variables are correlated, when one changes the other probably will also change. Dots that look like they are trying to form a line are strongly correlated. Sometimes the scatter plot may show little correlation when all the data are considered at once. Stratifying the data, that is breaking it into two or more groups based on some difference such as the equipment used, the time of the day, some variation in materials or differences in the people involved may show surprising results. Flowcharts define and analyze processes. 
They build a step-by-step -step picture of the process for analysis, discussion or communication purposes. Now creating a flowchart. First, familiarize the participants with the flowchart symbols. Draw the process flowchart and fill it out in detail about each element and analyze the flowchart. Determine which steps add value and which do not in the process of simplifying the work. Some examples of simple symbols are the shape of a diamond symbolizes decisions. A parallelogram represents input or output. The rectangle is the processing symbol. An arrow for flow line and so forth. Flowcharts are used to define, standardize or find areas for improvement in a process. A process map is an adaptation of the flow diagram to document a process where steps are aligned by role or department. Usually the vertical axis defines the role and the horizontal axis displays increasing time. The purpose of cause and effect is graphical representation of the trail leading to the root cause of a problem. Now the question is, how is it done? First is decide which quality characteristic, outcome or effect you want to examine. May use Pareto chart. Backbone. Draw straight line. Ribs. Categories. Medium sized bones. Secondary causes and small bones, root causes. Break problems down into bite-sized pieces to find root cause. Foster's teamwork. Common understanding of factors causing the problem. Roadmap to verify picture of the process. And follow brainstorming relationship are the benefits of cause and effect diagram. You continue the process of branching off into more and more directions until every possible cause has been identified. The final result will represent a pile of all the factors relating to the effect being explored and the relationship between them. Pareto charts are used to identify and prioritize problems to be solved. They are actually histograms aided by the 80 by 20 rule adapted by Joseph Duran. Remember the 80 by 20 rule states that approximately 80% of the problems are created by approximately 20% of the causes. This is the economic concept that Duran applied to quality problems. The meaning behind that 80 by 20 rule is that there are vital few causes that create the problems. Now the question is, how is it done? First, create a preliminary list of problem classifications. Tally the occurrences in each problem classification. Arrange each classification in order from highest to lowest and construct the bar chart. Pareto analysis helps graphically display results so the significant few problems emerge from the general background. It tells you what to work on first. Control charts are used to determine whether a process will produce a product or service with consistent measurable properties. The process for developing a process chart is the same for almost all charts. The statistical computations are what make it different and sometimes more complicated. Steps used in developing process control charts are identify critical operations in the process where inspection might be needed, identify critical product characteristics, determine whether the critical product characteristic is a variable or an attribute. Select the appropriate process control chart. Establish the control limits and use the chart to monitor and improve and update the limits. A variable is a continuous measurement. An attribute is the result of a binomial process that results in an either or situation. Six Sigma is a widely used methodology for measuring and improving an organization's operational performance through a rigorous analysis of its practices and systems. Six Sigma seeks to identify and remove the causes of defects and errors in manufacturing and business processes. Six Sigma was heavily inspired by six preceding decades of quality improvement methodologies such as quality control, TQM and zero defects based on the work of pioneers such as 
Shiwat, Deming, Juran, Ishikawa, Taguchi, and others. Graph of the normal distribution which underlies the statistical assumptions of the Six Sigma model. Six Sigma has two key methodologies, DMIC and DMADV. First, DMAIC define process improvement goals that are consistent with customer demands and the enterprise strategy. Measure key aspects of the current process and collect relevant data. Analyze the data to verify cause and effect relationships. Improve or optimize the process based upon data analysis using techniques like design of experiments. Control to ensure that any deviations from target are correlated before they result in defects. Second is DMADV. Define design goals that are consistent with customer demands and the enterprise strategy. Measure and identify CTQ. Analyze to develop and design alternatives. Create a high-level design and evaluate design capability to select the best design. Design details. Optimize the design and plan for design verification. This phase may require simulations. Verify the design. Set up pilot runs. Implement the production process and hand it over to the process owners. Six Sigma borrows martial arts ranking terminology to define a hierarchy and career path that cuts across all business functions and a promotion path straight into the executive suit. Six Sigma makes use of a great number of established quality management methods that are also used outside of Six Sigma. Now let us check if we have understood the various concepts discussed in this lesson clearly. The main purpose of check sheets is to facilitate the collection and analysis of data by operating personnel carefully and accurately. Right or wrong? Right. Histogram provides clues about the characteristics of the population from which the samples are taken. Right or wrong? Wrong. Check sheets does not often confuse with data sheets and checklists. Right or wrong? Right. Before we end, let us briefly revise what we have studied till so far. Management cannot expect employees to effectively participate in problem solving and continuous improvement programs, that is to be empowered, unless they are provided training in how to address problems. The seven tools of quality make it easy for the collection and analysis of the data for management by facts. They can assist the quality professional in root cause analysis. They help organizations understand their processes in order to improve them. A picture can convey ideas better than many words. The seven tools of quality are the cause and effect diagram, check sheet, control chart, flow chart, histogram, Pareto chart, and scatter diagram. They are simple but powerful tools that can be of significant value throughout the problem solving and continuous improvement processes.